A severed head on a pike seemed such a grisly trophy to be displayed in the chapel at Chalon, and yet it took me weeks before I got up the nerve to ask Father Armand why he kept it. The ancient priest stared out the window for a long time, recalling days gone by. I was there, he said finally, at the Battle of the Catalonian Fields, fighting alongside Isis and Theodoric the Goth. I knew there had been a battle here, decades ago. Peasants still overturned skeletons and broken shields with their plows from time to time. Who was it, father? I asked him. Who were you fighting? He turned back to regard me, paralyzing me in his old man's stare. Attila the Hun, he said, and then he told me the story. The Huns rode out from the wilderness sometime in the 400s, eager to feast on a Roman Empire weak from internal corruption and the expansion of other barbarian tribes. It was the Huns who drove many of these other barbarians before them. They were terrifying warriors from the steppes of Asia, their bodies disfigured from ritual scarring, their legs deformed from a near lifetime in the saddle. Despite their fearsome aspect, the Huns might have been little more than raiders, had it not been for the leadership of Attila. He called himself the Scourge of God. Attila and his brother Bleda led the Huns not just to raid, but to devastate Scythia and Persia. You challenge my every decision. It is as if you seek to lead the Huns yourself. Very well. The Iron Boar lairs near here. Let the one who kills this mighty beast lead our people. This way, Attila. Follow. Blada will lead us to ruin. Perhaps he should not return from his boar hunt. Accidents can happen. Tracks, brother. Ride ahead and see if you can flush the boar out.
the ground.
Charles Hansen. Charles Hansen.
over to Attila. You must take them by force.
Perhaps if your leader Attila will visit our village in the west, our people can make an alliance. For now, a truce. Yeah! 
Supply us with ten horses. We will repay our debt of honor. You would be wise to withdraw from our domain and pursue your petty conquests elsewhere, Hans.
actually kept it off the grass.
Father Armand more about this legendary Attila the Hun, whom the stories always treat as more of a monster than a man. He was a man, the priest said, but he did not look like the Romans, nor did he worship the Roman god. That was the cause of all that was to follow. Father Armand shivered, as if from the cold breeze that blew in from the chapel's open windows. Kingship among the barbarians, was not by divine right or lineage, but by who had the strongest will. Attila was the strongest of the Huns, and he reinforced his position by brandishing a rusty old blade and proclaiming it to be the Sword of Mars, the old Roman god of war. Attila had a custom of fiercely rolling his eyes, as if he wished to enjoy the terror which he inspired. He had a power over other men, so that many chose to join him. Many foreigners joined his council, Scythians and Burgundians and Goths. Most notable among these was the son of a prominent Roman family, sent as a hostage to ensure peace between Romans and Huns. The name of this boy was Flavius Aetius, a name not soon to be forgotten. If you like my video, Please subscribe to my channel and comment below. I'll see you later.